Hello, friends. If you are enjoying our podcast and would like to show your support, then Clark and I would love for you to check out Sleep Tight Premium. Not only will your support help us keep producing the show, but by subscribing, you get access to all our calming stories, meditations, and more. All interruption-free, plus shout-outs and an exclusive story every Friday. Just head to sleeptightpremium.com or follow the link in our show notes to learn more. Thank you. Hello, I'm Cheryl, and this is Sleep Tight Relax, a calming bedtime podcast for the young and young at heart. It's time to get cozy in bed and listen to tonight's story. Our sleep story tonight is the third part of the tale of Daddy Longlegs. Daddy Longlegs got trapped in the toe of Peter Mink's boot when he was at Jimmy Rabbit's shoe store, trying to get new shoes. Peter Mink doesn't know that Daddy Longlegs is in his shoe, and he takes off. When Peter stops to go for a swim, he takes off his boots, and Daddy Longlegs heads out quickly to try and escape. When Daddy Longlegs looks around, he sees something that he just cannot believe. No matter how your day was, let's forget about it for now and focus on slowing down and feeling relaxed. Close your eyes and feel warm and secure. Next, I would like you to take a slow, deep breath in through your nose, as big a breath as you can and as slow as you can. Then slowly let the air out through your mouth. Taking deep belly breaths helps us relax at any time of the day, but it's a great habit to have before sleep. Try it again. Take a deep breath in and let the air slowly flow out. Take a deep breath in And now out. Breathe in deeply, filling your body with air and relaxation. Breathe out slowly, expelling any tension. Try to keep breathing slowly and deeply as we continue with the third part of the tale of Daddy Longlegs. It was not exactly a pleasant ride that Daddy Longlegs had in the toe of Peter Mink's shoe. Not only was it dark inside the shoe, but it was so cramped that Daddy Longlegs was most uncomfortable. And what was even worse, he hadn't even the faintest idea where he was going. Sometimes Daddy Longlegs was almost sure that Peter Mink was carrying him around Blue Mountain. And at other times, he thought that Peter must be following Swift River to see where it went. Perhaps? Anyhow, Daddy Longlegs suffered such a pitching and tossing and tumbling and jouncing as he had ever known in all his life. Then at last, to Daddy Longlegs' great relief, Peter Mink kept quite still for a long time. That was when Peter Mink burrowed into a haystack to take a nap. 
And since it was then many hours past Daddy Longlegs' regular bedtime, he went to sleep too. But he awoke with a great start when Peter Mink crawled out of his shelter about dawn. And at first, Daddy Longlegs couldn't imagine what was happening. But after he had been bounced about a bit, he remembered the terrible accident that had happened to him in Jimmy Rabbit's shoe shop in the meadow. Suddenly, Peter Mink stopped. And to Daddy Longlegs' great delight, Peter began to take off his shoes. Yes, Peter Mink removed his shoes. And then, he removed himself. That is to say, he dropped his shoes carelessly upon the ground, for that was his way, and took himself off. Daddy Longlegs waited until Peter Mink had gone away, and then he dashed out of the shoe much faster than he had entered it the evening before. Yes, the evening before. For now it was the following morning and broad daylight. Daddy Longlegs stretched his eight legs, first one after another, and then all together. He was so glad to escape from his cramped quarters that he had little thought for anything except the joy of being free once more. Then he remembered all at once that he was lost, and that was enough to start his eight legs shaking beneath him in a very unpleasant fashion. Daddy Longlegs was frightened. Anyone could have seen that. After a few minutes, he looked around, wondering which way he should go. And as he gazed at his surroundings, he saw, not far off, a familiar-looking object. At first, Daddy Longlegs could scarcely believe his eyes and he looked steadily at what he saw, as if he half expected it would fly away and vanish. But the object did nothing of the kind, and how could it anyhow? Because it was Farmer Green's house that had caught Daddy Longlegs' eye. And there stood the great barn too, a little way off. And there was the bridge across Swift River. Without knowing what he was doing, Peter Mink had brought Daddy Longlegs almost home. And then he had taken off his shoes because he wanted to go for a swim in the duck pond in the hope of catching an eel for his breakfast. Well, Daddy Longlegs lost no time in making his way back to the stone wall by the roadside. And the first person he met there was none other than little Mrs. Ladybug, who seemed delighted to see him and asked him how he liked working for Farmer Green. Yes, it's a fine day, said Daddy Longlegs. The rain is holding off, and it looks as if Farmer Green was going to get his oats harvested without their being wet after all. I see you can't hear very well today. Mrs. Ladybug observed in a pitying tone. It's a shame, and Farmer Green ought to be very grateful to you for your help. He hasn't said a word to me, Daddy Longlegs told her, and Mrs. Ladybug declared she couldn't understand it. But there were many other things, too, that she didn't understand. She had heard that Daddy Longlegs was a harvestman, but she didn't know that some people called him by that name merely because he was seen in Pleasant Valley about the time Farmer Green harvested his crops. As for working in the fields, Daddy Longlegs knew no more about that than did Buster Bumblebee. 
and Farmer Green would have laughed heartily at the idea of either of them helping him. For several days after his unlucky journey across the meadow, when he tried to reach the field where Farmer Green was harvesting his oats, Daddy Longlegs did not wander far from the stone wall. But one day, Rusty Wren told him that his cousin, Long Bill Wren, was going to give a party at his house in the reeds on the banks of the Black Creek. And although he had not been invited to the party, Daddy Longlegs thought it would be pleasant to go to it. Accordingly, he started off at once, though the party was not to take place until the afternoon of the following day. But Daddy Longlegs knew that he was a slow walker and Black Creek was a long distance away. Now it was a fine, beautiful morning when Daddy Longlegs set forth on his journey and he traveled steadily all day long without meeting with an adventure of any sort. When night came, he crept inside of an old fallen tree trunk and he went to sleep feeling very happy because he was thinking what a good time he was going to have at the party the next afternoon. But when morning came and Daddy Longlegs crawled out of the hollow tree to continue his journey, he had a great disappointment. The moment he thrust his head out of his hiding place, he knew that he was in trouble. And he saw at once that he would have to miss Rusty Wren's cousin's party, because he certainly couldn't go on with the weather as it was. Yet the sun was shining brightly, and there was scarcely a cloud to be seen in the sky. A person might naturally wonder then what Daddy Longlegs could have found to worry him. It wasn't raining, and it certainly wasn't snowing, because it was not much later than midsummer. Nevertheless, Daddy Longlegs looked upon the fields with a most mournful face. I cannot travel in this terrible wind, he muttered. If I had known there was going to be such a wind, I would never have left home. And now you know what Daddy Longlegs' trouble was. With his small body raised so high in the air by his long, thin legs, he always found it hard to walk when the wind was blowing strongly. The strong gusts buffeted him about so that he pitched and tossed like a chip on the mill pond when its surface was ruffled. And Daddy Longlegs had learned quite early in his life to seek some sheltered spot on windy days, venturing forth only when the air was calmer. Of course, it was never very pleasant to be obliged to lie low like that when there were a hundred things he wanted to do. But it was much worse to be caught far away from home in a terrible gale. Not only was there no knowing how long he would have to stay hidden in the fallen tree before he dared begin his long homeward journey, but he had no one with whom he could talk. And it had always been Daddy Longlegs' custom to spend gusty days as agreeably as possible by gossiping with his neighbors. Besides, there was the party on the bank of Black Creek. Daddy Longlegs knew right away that it was useless for him to try to attend it, and so it was no wonder that he felt unhappy. For a long time, Daddy Longlegs lay inside the hollow fallen tree and looked out upon the windswept fields. If the stone wall hadn't been so far away, he would certainly have tried to return home. But the weather was altogether too dangerous. He knew it would be risky to attempt such a long journey. 
as he sat looking out of the crack in the old tree through which he had crept inside it, Daddy Longlegs suddenly saw a reddish-brownish flash flicker past the opening. Goodness, he exclaimed, I wonder what that was. And in another moment, the same bright patch of color again whisked across the hole. Then, Daddy Longlegs heard a sound like someone scratching upon the tree trunk. And being of a very curious nature, he crawled half through the hole and peered out to see what was happening. Daddy Longlegs was all ready for a fright. He was so upset on account of being caught away from home on that windy day that he was unusually jumpy and fidgety. But, as it happens often at such times, he met with a pleasant surprise. For there sat Sandy Chipmunk, with his long tail curled over his back and something very like a smile on his bright face. Knowing that Sandy Chipmunk never harmed anybody that minded his own business, Daddy Longlegs spoke to him at once. It's a bad day, isn't it? He called. Hearing that tiny voice, which seemed to come from inside the fallen tree, Sandy Chipmunk was so startled that he leaped high into the air. And when he came down again upon all fours, he found himself staring straight into Daddy Longlegs' beady eyes. Oh, it's you, eh? cried Sandy Chipmunk. And he looked rather silly, because he knew that he had no reason to fear anyone as kind as Daddy Longlegs. It's a bad day, isn't it? said Daddy Longlegs once more. I'm sorry, I can't agree with you, Sandy replied. I think it's the finest weather that ever was. You don't mean to say that you like this wind, Daddy Longlegs cried. Why, I don't see how you dare to be out in it. Oh, it's nothing when you're used to it, Sandy Chipmunk answered lightly. I will never get used to the wind, I'm afraid, Daddy Longlegs told him sadly. It blows me about so terribly. And he went on to explain how he had started on a long journey the day before and how he didn't dare go on, nor turn around and go home either. Well, well, Sandy Chipmunk exclaimed. You seem to be in a fix. But why don't you ride home? Ride? Daddy Longlegs shrilled. On what, I should like to know? On Farmer Green's wagon, Sandy told him promptly. I happen to know that Johnny Green and his grandmother drove to the millers this morning to have a sack of wheat ground into flour, and they'll be coming back home this afternoon. Sandy Chipmunk did not tell Daddy Longlegs how he had been tied up in the sack of wheat and had had a ride in the wagon himself. He did not like riding in wagons, and he had been so glad to escape from the sack and jump into the bushes by the roadside that he had stopped to dance on Daddy Longlegs' tree before scampering back home. His suggestion took Daddy Longlegs by surprise. At first, he felt a bit timid about riding in a wagon, but Sandy Chipmunk assured him it was not half as bad as it was said to be. Is it far to the road? Daddy asked him. Not if you hurry, Sandy told him. If you start now, you surely ought to be able to reach the road by the time old Ebenezer passes this field. Ebenezer? Who's he? Daddy Longlegs inquired. Oh, he's the horse that draws the wagon you're going to ride in, Sandy Chipmunk explained. Daddy Longlegs thought deeply for a few moments, or as deeply as anyone could who had such a small head as he did. And then he said, I will try your plan as I want to go home. 
but it's very dangerous for me to do so much walking on such a windy day as this. Come on, cried Sandy. I'll show you the way to the road. And having started Daddy in the right direction, he hastened off to the road himself to wait for the wagon. Sandy waited by the roadside for a long, long time. And while he was lingering there, Daddy Longlegs was battling with the wind and having hard work to keep his feet. But by hurrying along fences and dodging behind boulders and bushes and every other sort of shelter that he could find, Daddy Longlegs managed to reach the roadside at last, where he arrived quite out of breath. Hooray, Sandy Chipmunk shouted as soon as Daddy Longlegs joined him. Here you are, and you're just in time, for there's the wagon rattling down the next hill, and old Ebenezer, that's the horse, please remember, he'll climb this rise as fast as he can, because he's in a hurry to get home. He can't be half as anxious to reach home as I am, Daddy Longlegs remarked. You don't need to worry. You'll get home soon enough, said Sandy. Soon the two watchers saw the old horse Ebenezer come jogging up the road. And then Sandy Chipmunk said something that sent Daddy Longlegs into a flutter of excitement. Here they come, cried Sandy. You'd better stand right in the middle of the road so you'll be sure to stop them. And the mere thought of doing such a dangerous thing as that made Daddy Longlegs turn quite pale. And that's the end of this part. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>